So let's wait. We wait for a little bit more. Okay, so okay, we we good. We got enough people to have this conversation because I'm I'm looking for feedback. <sighs> so I went running today. Okay, so people are still coming in. I went running today. Had a great run. Like I told you guys, um, it's about eighty degrees right now. Probably gonna hit a hundred. Um, right now I'm in rainy season, so, um, just really enjoying life right here. Okay, somebody says, you are cut. <laughs> thanks, thanks, um, yeah, thank you. I appreciate uh, um, all your wonderful comments. It's, I gotta put my glasses on. You know how that go. All right, so let's hit it. I'm gonna get to it. You, thanks, um, home 53. All right, so I, I, I went for, I went for a run. I had a great run. Okay. See, the devil is busy, but he's not in my business. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hit you off where I'm coming. So, I, I, you know, I had a great run. My heart, my heart was beating nice. You know, I felt, you know, my lungs capacity was in, oxygen intake. It was, you know, I was breathing. You know, I'm 55. And, you know, I still got it as far as jog, running. So I, was, I had a great, great run. So I get home. And my sister's here. I want to make sure she don't hear 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 this conversation. Um, so my sister's here, and um, my neighbor boy, kids grow up so quick. I remember when he was three. Now he's he's getting, oh anyway. Let me get I'm, I'm, let me get back on track. Okay, come back, come back. So I'm jogging. So you know, I come back and my sister's here. You know, I had some bananas. I got some bananas from the market. I got some bananas from the market and I had some water. So I just finished working. I wanted to get my potassium. I wanted to stay hydrated. So I went to the store. Every time when I go jogging, I do carry some money in my pocket just in case because I didn't carry any water with me. So I like to stay hydrated. I don't like to be dehydrated. You know, as you get older, you got, you have to stay hydrated because I don't want to pass out of a heat stroke. I keep looking back because my sister, she's very sensitive. But, um... So I get home. I get home. I'm feeling good. I got my water. I got my bananas. I just had two bananas to, to carb load up. Complex carbohydrates. You know, get some carbs for my brain. Carbs for my, you know, I just deplete it. I'm sweating. So I'm feeling, you know, drink some water. To put water. You take water out when you're running. You got to put water back in. I'll pass out. So I come to the door. And my sister tells me that somebody died. And I said, oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. I said, oh, my goodness, somebody died. Who died? She says, um, you know, let's say Johnny. Johnny died. His name is not Johnny, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not say his name. Uh, his wife was trying to reach us. Uh, and, 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 you know, she bumped into my sister and she said, my husband died. All right, let, let's get to the, and I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the, the, no chaser. I'm going to go, and I'm 55, and I'm not going to give you the cutesy. I'm going straight to the, to the juggler vein. So I said, oh my goodness. Oh, I know that person. She's, I said, oh, I know that person. I remember that person. But now I wasn't close to the person, but the person was obese. The, the husband and the wife is, is obese. They're overweight. And even the child, they have a child and the child is obese too. Now, mind you, when we first met them, she, they were taking my sister's African dance class. So they were, you know, exercising, but they were eating a lot of crappy food. So we extended our services to them as far as fitness and, and nutrition and exercise to, to, to give them support. Now, mind you, we all, this is my occupation now. I, I'm here to assist people, but I also have responsibilities to my family. I, I, I do... We do do community work, but when, when, with my services, I have to be my services so I could feed my family. So what people have a tendency to do is that they'll ask you random questions. Like I get that a lot as a fitness person. People will try to get free advice, like whatever, because they don't want to pay. So she was one of those people. She was one of those people that would try to get tidbits of information. Oh, you know, I have this. Like, what do you think I should take for that? Now, mind you, I have I do consultations. Um, been in the industry for 30 years, uh, but she she, she uh, would ask me random questions. I wouldn't answer it. I wouldn't answer it. I'm not going to entertain it. First and foremost, I don't answer it because it's disrespectful to the person. 
And I'm going to tell you why it's disrespectful. It, it, what it says to me as a person in the fitness industry and who makes a living and how I pay my bills, it says to me, you don't respect my services. So you're going to try to come around the other way to get free information, which is disrespectful. Put yourself in my shoes. If, if you was how you, how you feed your family and people come to you and they come across to try to get rent information for free, but they don't want to pay you. But they'll pay everybody else but you. They'll pay the doctor. They'll pay this person, that person. But when it comes to, to, to you, they want free information. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think I should do about this? And I find that like, a, like somebody slapped me in the face. I find it disrespectful. And, and, and what I do is that I tend to just be quiet. I go ghost. So she was one of those people. She would ask random questions like if I'm at a function, if I'm at a gathering, you know, uh, and, and she would, you know. She would ask me, like, well, you know, what do you think, what kind of exercises do you think I should do for this? You know, my, you know, I'm seeing my doctor and, you know, my doctor this, and he gave me some medication, me and my husband. Now, mind you, both of them are obese. Both of them are obese. Obese, obese, obese. Like, really, like, his stomach is so big, it's, un he can't even see his feet. His feet, he can't even look at his feet. His feet. Forget about what else can he, he can't see down there. You already know what I'm talking about as far as his little genital areas. He can't even see that because his stomach is so big. He can't see his genitals and he can't see his feet. But he's going to come to me. And when they first met me, they said, oh, you, you, you're you a fitness trainer. Mm, I, you know, I've been thinking about getting that. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, but what do you think about this exercise? You, what do you think I should be eating? What kind of juices? You, you, you think I could get some juice recipes? Okay. So that these, these, these are the type of people that I'm talking about. So in case you know. Um, sometimes when that happens, I got to tell you guys, I'm asking, I always ask myself, is it because I'm black that they don't want to pay me, but they're so conditioned to paying other people that's not black? Because I got to tell you, in my community, it's black people, not all of us, but some of us have this bad behavior where we'll pay somebody else that don't look like us, but we won't pay each other or respect each other's business. You know, I'm a small business person, but I've been in the fitness industry and I worked at Reebok equinox new york sports club but when my community comes to me i do do community service and there's a time and a place for that but when when with with due respect to my profession and my certifications and and what i have to do to maintain this i it it, it shocks me how people will try to to go around about to get free information and basically not respect the process that i went through to receive this information um which is and this is, it, it blows my mind. It blows my mind when people do this. So, you know, she was, she's overweight, he's overweight, and the child is overweight. And the child is only 12 years old, and the child is obese at 12 years old. The girl is hitting almost 200 pounds, baby. She's 12 years old, and she's 200 pounds. The mother is bigger than that. The mother is like a, like a job of the hut, like a sumo wrestler. So the mother, father, and the ch children are overweight. So... I just got to, you know, my sister told me that the husband died. Now, now I'm not a cold person, but it didn't come as a surprise that he was, he, he, he's dead. You know what I mean? Because I met them six months ago, right? He could have done something and said, hey, you know what, Delilah? Um, I want to I wanna hire you because I need help with my health. Um, I would like to invest in myself so I can live a life and be healthy for my daughter, which I brought into the world. So, and I find people who are, who are not respectable of their own health and they're obese and they have little children. Why did you bring them into the world? Why did you, that's what, that's what behooves me is that, okay, you're obese. You know already what obesity is, leads to the risk factors that you're putting yourself in. Not only are you obese, now you have a child that you created because you buy the food in the, in the grocery store. Now your child is obese. And now he's dead. He died of complications. I tried to, I extended my service to him, but he kept wanting free, he wanted, he wanted to do the freebie thing. So I'm not doing that. I got, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't, I cannot. And, and it, with anybody with any due respect to anybody's, I'm a small business, LL, limited liability corporation. Um, I'm not going to entertain foolishness like that because it's a, it's disrespectful. Anybody who even asks for free information or random information, I got to tell you, and a lot of times when people do it even online, I don't even respond to it. I don't, and I will not respond to it. I will not. So it's not that I'm being disrespectful, 
but you have to check yourself that you think about you being in my shoes and I was asking you for, for, for how you make a living and give me some of that for free. Like if you was an accountant, can you do my taxes or give me some free tax tips? Or, or you know, you know how, or can you do my taxes for free? Meanwhile, you have a child and you have, you have, you have, you know, you have rent to pay and I, I, I'm just going to get what I'm going to get from, from me, from my, do my, ta- but I don't care about how you pay your bills. That's so disrespectful. And I, I find that when people do that, I got to look at them sideways, but I walk away and I don't even deal with that person. If you ever see me shut down, that's because you are, uh, you, you about, I'm about to close up on you and not communicate with you. It's disrespectful. It's di- and we don't check each other on that because we, we have this thing where we don't want to, we, we consider as other people's feelings before our own. So we don't want to hurt other people's feelings, but we're not taking into consideration that that person just dis- disrespected you. That person disrespected you and they disrespected themselves because they're, they're trying to get something for nothing. That's not a good way to start a relationship with me. It's not. So he did that and he's dead now. I don't wish him any badness because I extended myself to him on several occasions. He just refused to, to, to invest in himself. So now he's dead. His wife is, is having an out-of-body experience and the child is is climbing the walls crying now if he would have taken the help six months would have been enough to at least get him to a place and space with his health where he would have gotten out of the vital signs out of his diagnosis he would have gotten out of that and leading more towards the living but because he didn't want to invest himself in himself and he was cheap because he wanted free advice and he wanted to tidbit and get free advice from this person free advice from this person free advice from this person he's dead now dead so no disrespect to anybody who does that, but you really need to really check yourself before you wreck yourself. And that goes with anybody that you're talking to you that have a business. You want information from even your accountant, your, your trainer, or your whatever. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, it doesn't put put you in a in a good light with the person if you want something reciprocate the law of the universe is to receive you have to give a lot of us want freebies and and i'm going to tell you something especially as people of color black people let me tell you something baby free comes at a cost i grew up with people who are on welfare and they think they're getting free money but you're not getting no free money, baby. That's coming at a cost to your, your, your ambition. What welfare does, it robs you of your, of your ambition and it robs you of, of making more money because you've settled for getting free money. Free money ain't free. Also, free food, um, all of the processed chemicals and the free food, the welfare system and the medical system, the botched up, free. Free means that you are just at the beck and call of the system and they can do with you as they will. You don't have a backbone to stand on because you don't own anything and you're so comfortable for that little bit of money that somebody just throwing at you and that becomes your value, that you don't value yourself. So when people do that and they have a welfare mentality and they don't value themselves, these are the people that try to come and talk to me and get free advice. And I'm going to be real with you. I don't entertain it because i see i see i see higher in you that you could actually go out create your own business name your price name your price and be your own boss but people who don't value themselves don't value the service that you give and those are not your clients unfortunately this man is dead he's dead because he didn't invest in himself and he didn't see himself as worthy of living and that's how it goes your action speaks louder than your words because I didn't um, I didn't play into it but I didn't entertain it at the same time you know what I mean so when his wife when my sister came to me and said he was dead and no disrespect I said well that's not a surprise I was like oh my god he's dead <gasps> my god I can't believe he's dead no I'm shocked he didn't die earlier sooner um, and, as, and as for his daughter If anybody I feel sorry for is the child, because the child, based on their bad habits, they, 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 now they put that poison on their child and that child is going to have to detox from something that wasn't, wasn't hers. Now she has to clean up their mess. 
see you you see how um it's it's a it's a it's a it's a roller coaster ride it's a it's a you you put that on your children and now and especially if you're overweight i mean please let's not do it um it it it's not right you know it's not right the child this i don't i don't even know when i was growing up children used to play outside you know and then we would you know but obesity was not a thing in the 70s when i was a kid um cancer wasn't that big it it was more like heart attacks but cancer in the 70s not that big uh, but now we have obese children but the point that i'm trying to make is that stress <laughs> now I went running and I, I, I released some dopamines. I felt good. I, I, you know, I was, you know, after jogging, I, I had my Walkman headphones on. I was going to say Walkman. You already know I'm old school. I didn't have a Walkman. I had my iPhone. <laughs> I'm old school. I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to read. I'm going to read. But I want, I, want, I want you to know something. And I want you to hear me loud and clear. If you're dealing with somebody who is a small business, the holidays are coming up. Um, even if they give you so-called complimentary free advice, dig in your pockets and tip them, tip them because you don't get something for nothing. When somebody, even, even with me, when somebody says that this is complimentary, I leave a tip. I leave a tip or a donation. I don't just take and say, oh, you know, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. you don't do that because the law the universal law of reciprocation is that you have to give to get if you're just taking 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 that's gonna come back to you that's gonna come back to you it, it's good look what happened with him he's dead now you know he wanted free information and he's dead so now his daughter has to suffer his wife is, is, is now here's the tricky thing the, the, the slippery slope about this so the wife um, is having panic attacks. She's overweight. She's she's obese. Let's let's be real. Now, if it was me, um, I would grieve. I would grieve because now they have the body, and you know they're in a foreign country. They're in Belize. I'm in Belize, so they have to sh either ship the body back to the states on ice. And, but the family's coming, so all of it, whatever. But so it's a mess right now. It's a mess, and and the, and what he passed away of, he could have prevented. He could have reversed the process with exercise and his eating so what 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 i'm trying to say too for me was stress so when i came in after jogging and my sister laid this laid this news on me that was so heavy um i just brushed it off because i was so high and excited you know i had finished my workout i was feeling good about myself my life is looking good look at the sunshine here look at where i'm at look at the trees so I'm feeding off the energy of the universe. I'm feeding off the energy of my environment. And I'm going to be honest with you. What is so amazing is that I extended help to this per particular individual and they did not. And they, they didn't take the help. So I did, even though the person has, has life is terminated, they have moved on to the next, they have transitioned. I can honestly say I tried to help this person. I can honestly say that I can, and I don't have any regrets. You know, I'm sorry that he passed away, but I can honestly say I did my part in extending the help, but he did not, he did not receive it. He did not want to, he, he made a choice not to take it. So with that being said, um, as far as stress and dealing with stress, um, how I deal with stress is I do my exercise, I watch what I eat, I do my meditation, I spend some time in nature, I work on me. And by me being healthy and I'm working on me, I can help other people because I'm, I'm in a place of space where I'm loving myself so I can extend what, I, what I'm giving myself, I can share with other people. But you can't give what you don't have. And the most important thing about um, healing is self-love. It's putting, your, putting yourself first before you could extend yourself to other people. Now, if the situation was reversed and um, I didn't extend myself to this person and um, I kind of just let them, you know, I always give people, even on TikTok, uh, you, you guys come to me and say, you want help. And what I do is extend myself um, and let you guys know that I have a website that you could actually go to the website and you can set up an appointment or a consultation. Always do that. So 
so with me with TikTok, I have a place where you can land and set up an appointment. But you could you could lead a horse to water, but you can't force him to drink it. People, and I get this a lot when you guys watch my video. You say, "Oh my goodness, I need your help. Oh my God, help me, help me. I want to eat like you. I want to live like you. Um, you're so blessed and so lucky." Oh, I'm just going to live vicariously through you. I'm just going to live through you. Um, that, to me, is a red flag. So here's what is, in my head, what I'm hearing when you say that, when I read. Um, a lot of you guys leave comments on my page. It says to me, and I'm going to be bold about it, because somebody's going to get mad, but you're going you're gonna to have to get mad. What don't kill you make you stronger, I'm going to tell you. What it says to me in translation in my brain, since I've been in the fitness industry for well over 30 years, when someone says that, oh, you know, I want to lose the weight, I want to eat like that, but it's too expensive, or but um, I don't have the time, I'm busy working, or but, you know, I just don't know where to start, or, you know, but um, I don't know what to do, I don't know, I just don't know, I don't know. Now, mind you, ladies and gentlemen, we're living in an age of I information highway. If, in fact, we have information overload. We have Google we have YouTube. We got information coming out the wazuzu. And when someone says to me, and and I'm being honest, and I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking about the words kind of coming out my mouth so I don't offend anybody. Um, the first thing that comes in my mind is that this pe person is playing games. That's the first thing that comes out my mouth in my head is this person is, is, is um, playing games. They're playing games. They're, they're not, and it's not me that they're playing games with. They're playing games with their own life. And also, they uh, want somebody to do the work for them. They don't, they don't want to do the work. They want you to do the work, which is me. So they want me. And, this is, and my website is online. If you really wanted me, you can find me. People not only want you to do the work for them, but they want you to reach out and be the... No, you need the help. I have a website. It's already laid out for you. This is where the laziness comes in, where people not only want you to do the work, they want you to do everything for them. And, and that's not going to work with me. And I'm not going to put myself in a position where I'm feeling overwhelmed. And that's where stress comes in, when you try to pick up other people's um, cross to bear. That's their cross to bear. I'm doing my work by you having a land, someplace to land and someplace, somebody that could assist you who's certified to do the work. But I'm not going to do your work and my work. That's laziness. And I'm going to take it a step further. When people do that, it shows me that they're not my client. Because if they're starting out this way, you only know how it's going to end. It's going to, it, it, if somebody's showing you, it's like, it's like being in a, in a dating game. If somebody is showing you who they are in the beginning, they're showing you, believe it. It's not going to get no better, baby. It, they, they, hey, in the beginning. So when people online show me who they are, I don't I don't second guess and say, oh, well, you know, they're, they're 80 years old or they're 50 years old or, you know, maybe I should do this. No, no, because the way you start a relationship and the way you extend yourself is what people are going to expect, expect you to do throughout the out the um, out the um, connection. So for me, I'm only interested in dealing with people who really want to put the work in. I'm not interested in dealing with somebody who wants to cry the victim role and say, woe is me. That's not my client. That's not my, my people. And, and, and even friends. I don't even have friends that woe is me because that's, that's stressful. And those people are drain, like vampires. They'll drain the life energy out of you because they don't want to do the work. They want to sit and kiki and gossip and talk about this person and talk about this person. But then... They not they talking about everybody else, but they sitting there instead of talking, they could be doing. That's an energy drainer. That's a succubus. That's a vampire. Nos veratu. The living dead. Those people will suck up the life energy you have. And once they sucked up the life energy you have, they will carry on to the next person, leaving remnants of dead cadavers around and drama. So for me, at 55. Um, I can see um, drama a mile away. And drama is stress. It's stress. 
drama is stress, 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 stress. And so how I keep my skin looking so good, how I got out of the States was I removed myself from drama situations, environments, and dramatic and drum and extremely drama queens. That goes for women and men and family members too. So for me, stress begins and starts with choices that we make in life, dictate the life that we live. If you are around somebody is a drama queen, always complaining, sucking up the energy, is tiring. When you leave them, you feel like you worked a month and you got you work you worked a whole week with no no lunch break, no break. You worked a whole you just you exhausted from that. No. No, no. So, so back to the, the gentleman that passed away. I my condolence to his family. But you know what? He didn't put the work in. He did, you know, he didn't put the work in. He he and you know, and let's let's take it to a, a religious. Let's take it to let's take it if we're religious, let's take it to God. Let's 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 talk about God. Let's bring God in this. God helps those who helps themselves. Faith without works is dead so um if you are a god-fearing person and you are walking in the light and god is is for you no one could be against you um do the work do the work do the work do the work don't just talk about it do it um we, we you'll start to see the fake is from the real people they just the fake is talk so for me how i dodge a bullet when it comes to stress is i dodge stressful people first and foremost i let them go i stop calling them um when they call i see the number i don't pick up um i keep it moving even on facebook or when i'm on tiktok don't respond and i don't have any remorse nor do i feel like i'm not a friend to that person because in order for me to be a friend to that person i have to be a friend to me first and at this particular point in time people like that and especially during the pandemic where it affects the immune system i don't need it i don't need my immune system to go down and i don't need to be around people who are are have a death wish so uh stress is real stress is real stress is real stress could actually take you out that's the first thing that could take you out and when people are stressed, they eat crappy food. They'll eat pizzas, burgers, because some people eat their emotions. I'm going to say that again. There are people who eat their emotions. They eat, 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 eat. Every time you see them, girl, what you doing? Oh, I'm eating. What you eating? Oh, I just bought some burritos and tacos. I have some Chinese food and some whatever. They just eat, eat, eat. Some people, every time you come around them and you hang around them, and you say, girl, let's hang out. We want to hang out. Let's go to that restaurant. There's a new restaurant that just opened. Instead of saying, hey, girl, let's just go for a walk. Let's just, let's just, let's just walk. We don't have, let's get an apple or a banana, some water, and let's walk. Here we go. Where we meeting at? Where's the meeting? Oh, at the restaurant, that new restaurant, Applebee's or whatever restaurant. So you could, and then and don't let it be an all you can eat. Don't let it be an all you can eat. It's like, it's like pigs in a trough. It's like people get together just to scarf down, eat, scarf down, eat their emotions. And then when they leave the restaurant, nothing is resolved. All they did was gossip, scarf down some food like pigs in a trough, and they, they go back, nothing is resolved. They go back the same way they came in the restaurant, and they'll meet up next week, same time, same place, doing the same thing. Then they wonder why they're so big. They, they oh, Lord, ooh, that's it. Oh, girl, you know how I gained that weight, the pandemic weight. Yeah, let's blame it on the pandemic. Oh, yeah, you know, girl, I couldn't work out, couldn't do this because that damn pandemic, I was trapped in the house. Now, we all got pandemic issues, and it's 24 hours in a day. But you know what, girl, I work out in the house. Or I come and I, I, I go for a walk in the early day, but I get it in because I love myself. I love myself, and I deserve the very best. And I'm going to take care of me first before I take care of somebody else because I come first. I come first. I'm first and foremost if I'm going to do me first. Me. Before anybody. Me come first. And that's not a selfish act. And women, you got to stop. You got to stop it. Because a lot of women are conditioned to breastfeeding everybody until your breast, until your tits dry up. And everybody done sucked off you. Now they're sucking onto the next person because you're dried up. And they dried you up. But you let them. 
So I'm not going to let somebody stress me out. Um, I extended my service, even on TikTok. I've, and, and, and a lot of you guys, I'm not even responding to some of the TikToks after I've heard you say, oh, I need your help, and I gave you my website already. So, we, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, when you're ready, you know where to find me. But I'm not going to take that on as, as my cross to bear. That's for you to do, because I'm, I'm living my life. Look where I'm at. It's, um, it's November, and I'm enjoying 80-degree weather. So, you know how I got here? I got rid of dead energy in my life, so-called friends that's just sucking the energy. Because if I would have had those people in my life, I would have still been in Brooklyn, in bed in the cold. So, excuse me on TikTok if you ask me random questions about your diabetes and I don't answer you. It's a reason why I'm not answering you. If you want answers from me, go to Delilah Fitness and book a consultation. It's really that easy. That's all. Just book it. That's it. But to ask me questions, and I'm telling, I'm telling everybody now, everybody in this room, everybody, if you ask me a question about your health and you say you want to heal or you want to stop taking your medication or whatever, invest in yourself. See the true value in yourself. Walk the walk. Invest in yourself. Go in there. Just like when you guys, you know, you scrape up some money to go to a concert or you scrape up some money to go to this restaurant. Or you scrape up money to get your hair done. You know how, sisters, we do it. You're getting your extensions done. You're getting your nails done. You're getting your little contacts, your makeup. You're getting Beyonce's latest makeup. And you got to look cute. Just like you scrape up and you go in. Value. It's about value. And when people don't value you, they won't. They don't see the value in you. They won't pay you. And to me, um, I know my value. So I don't, I'm not even going to put myself in that mindset that I'm not offering value. I know what I'm offering. I know what I bring to the table. I know my body of work and I have a, re- a resume and I have testimonies from clients that have worked with me who have changed and who are living their life like it's golden using the tools that I gave them. So it's, it's not about... It's not about me and my value and what I'm bringing to the table. I know. I've, I've done the work. I'm, I got it, you know. I'm living it. And, and also with hypocrisy, I'm not one of those people in the wellness industry that's overweight, that's telling you to lose weight. And meanwhile, I'm, 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 I'm obese. I'm obese. I'm overweight. And I'm telling you guys how to lose weight, but I'm overweight. So you ain't got to worry about it. Because what I tell and what I share with you, I, I absorb it and I use it as, as my lifestyle. So I'm not, I'm not feeling like what I'm bringing to the table doesn't work. Because I'm, I'm a living example of what I bring to the table. So that, that's not an issue with me. That's not my issue. And I'm not going to take on something that's not mine. But what I will say for those of you who, who like to play um, those games, and I love you, but don't play them here. Don't play them here. Um, it's unfortunate that the man is, is, has, has transitioned to the next stage of life. I wish him on his journeys, love and light. I, I'm giving, look at that light. I'm love and light. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm choosing to live. I want to live. Every day, my life like it's golden and, I'm, and, it's, and it's happening. So um, if you don't value yourself enough to invest in yourself, take a note from this guy's page. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Take care of your health. Tomorrow's not promised to none of us. But if you don't take care and invest in you, then, you know, and it also, it also baffles me when people say they want a loving relationship. They want to be why nobody, they meet the right person. That's what they say. They say, oh, Lord, you know, I want to, you know, I'm a good person. I want to meet that right person. I want to meet that right person. I'm waiting for that right person. You the right person. You the right person, and you teach people how to treat you. And I'm just gonna say it, and it's not body shaming. And if you feel that it's body shaming, then you need to really reevaluate your your um, view of health and wellness. If you are overweight, right? And the guys always say, "Oh, well, she got a pretty face. She got a pretty face." That's that's a code that. <laughs> Let me tell you, because you know, when a guy says, "Oh, you know, well, she, you know, at least she got a pretty face." You know what he's saying. And if big bone, well, you know, how, how, oh, she big boned it. Now, black people, we say big boned it constantly. You know what big boned it means. That's code word for she big. Now, I know 
Black people got curves in all of the right places, baby. And you're going to shake that money maker. And I know black people got behinds. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, baby. I'm black. I know. It, but there's a distinction that I'm going to make for you. And I'm going to give it to you. We have a tendency to glorify dysfunction. We have a tendency because we don't want to work on ourselves. And I find from experience, misery loves company. A lot of times when people don't want to work on themselves, they don't want to get better. They don't want to see you get better. So anytime, for example, if somebody's, you know, I, and I watch you guys on TikTok, or whatever. Somebody's 300 and change, 300 pounds or 200 and something pounds. You know that the person's, let's just go, let's, let's, let's go with me here. Now I'm in the fitness industry, right? Let's say we're all doctors. We're all, all of us are doctors. We just, we, we just um, did the Hippocratic, Hippocratical Oath that we, we, we are gonna, we're going to put our life on the line to make sure that we, we provide health care for people and take care of people. So we're all doctors here. You get somebody who is obese or overweight, right? Now, let's just say, like this gentleman, he, 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 he passed away. He's dead. And you had to do an autopsy on why the person died, right? So you have to cut this person open and find out what happened. Now, you're looking at his organs, but his organs inside of his, that cadaver has so much visceral fat. He got so much fat around his colon and around his pancreas and around his liver that what the fat did was get in between the organs and move them, shift them out of the way. So now his organs are, are, are moved around. So it's so much fat. So now that the body, you, you peel the skin, you get to the layers of the organs, you see the colon, you see a lot of visceral fat around the organs. So the bottom line is that the person is, is deformed inside. And his heart, everybody's heart is the size of a fist. I don't care what nobody say. I know anatomy. The size of a fist. So that this heart, the size of a fist, has four chambers. Upper ventricle, left. We, we all know the heart. We all know it have to pump blood boom 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 throughout uh, the whole entire body of somebody 300 400 pounds boom now the heart has to work twice as hard to pump blood in somebody who's obese so they're working their heart just as just as hard that's premature aging premature aging so you're going to work your heart to death See, someone like me who runs and jogs, my heart don't have to beat that much. First of all, I don't have a lot of adipose tissue, and I have a lot of lean muscle mass. So my heart is a, and I did cardiovascular, I just jogged. So my heart being a muscle, I just worked my muscle. So my heart don't have to beat as, as fast and as hard. See how it's beating? This is how my heart beats. And it pumps, pumps, pumps. Somebody overweight, their heart has to beat twice as much as mine. So you're putting a strain and a stress on your heart. It's a muscle. You're killing yourself. So please do not come to me and say that I'm body shaming. Because I can see somebody's internal organs and I can see how the pancreas, the colon, the, the liver, the spleen, the spine is being deformed. So you guys have to stop glorifying obesity. It's not cute. And it's not fear. Let's just say the person's on welfare, right? Or they have medical. They have to go to the government and apply for medical. Now, everybody pays their taxes. No disrespect. So this person who's obese, and they're obese by their own, by their own consumption. They did it to themselves because they're eating, eating, eating. They don't go to the gym. Um, they, they eat and eat. And now they having a problem with their with their health so they need to go to the welfare and get medicaid now medicaid is what everybody pays with their tax dollars so a lot of us that go to the gym i don't really i'll get a checkup you know whatever i'll pay for it because i don't have medicaid i don't mess with medicaid because it's for people who have and i leave it for the children like if a mother is a single parent and she don't have a man so she needs she needs that she needs that and i'm, I, and I'm going to sacrifice that because i'm going to pass mine on to the children I'm going to make sure the children get because I'm old enough to be responsible for my health. I'm not going to be a burden on the system. That's being a burden on the system. So with that being said, what happens is that you put yourself in harm's way, but you also bleed out the system. And if you have children, you put yourself, you put your kids in a real 
uncomfortable situation if you were to drop dead of complications due to obesity. So it's like you, 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 it's nobody's being mean to you. And I gotta say, when I get on an airplane and I and I, I'm sitting next to somebody, I'm, I'm sitting next to somebody who's overweight. I gotta tell you, they have a tendency, and this happened to me every time I sit next to somebody overweight, to come into my seat, into my chair. So they'll spill out, and they'll be sitting in my seat. And then when I want to put my elbow. I want to put my elbow on the on the thing. I can't because they're so like, you know, they take that's not fair to me. So I gotta be inconvenienced and kind of be. I pay for a ticket, and I gotta kind of be like this and squeeze up so I don't like you know inconvenience this person. But we both paid the same price for a ticket. But I can't really you know rock with the ride. I gotta get comfortable. Next, you know, when I I get off the plane after an eight hour ride, my damn back is killing me because it's been in an uncomfortable position. And now I have to go take a yoga class or do some, um, you know, some salut sun salutations, you know. But at the end of the day, it's it's not about we have to guys, please stop doing that. Stop gassing people up on a tank that's empty. You're not doing somebody over who's overweight a, a, a service. What you're doing is is giving them a, 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 a pass to death. And, and obesity is, is a socially acceptable disease. You guys, you know, you you have from what i'm seeing with society we have accepted it as the new normal it's a lot of things that we're accepting as normal that's not healthy but as a fitness trainer i gotta tell you please do not see me as the bad guy i am not the bad guy what i'm doing is that it's uncomfortable um hearing the truth it's uncomfortable um change is uncomfortable but for me when I when I walk into my community, like when I was in Brooklyn and I seen a lot of black people and I see them overweight. Now, I'm not just saying black people's overweight. White folks are, too. But I'm talking about my community. When I was in Bed-Stuy, I would see my people and we, we, we you know, we would go to church and praise the Lord. We won praise the Lord. We won praise the Lord away from a heart attack. So it's just like and, and let's think about Jesus. Jesus wasn't obese. You know, he walked around. He did his cardio. He ate food but you know he ate within reason and he kept it moving so you know you want to walk like jesus talk like jesus jesus walked he did his cardio he walked from bethlehem to he he, he didn't take a go he walked he walked jesus walked yes he did ashanta mashenta so we gotta we gotta we gotta come clean we gotta come clean and call it tell the truth and shame the devil because this is an uncomfortable conversation because i'm sure some of you sitting in the audience right now is overweight or Look at that bee, that bees. A lot of you, and I'm gonna say a lot of you, because I've I've already asked a lot of you guys uh, weight before, and I know a lot of you guys are sitting in that seat and you're obese. You're you you know you're obese. You know you're uncomfortable. You're overweight, but you don't you 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 haven't gotten the support and been held accountable. But I'm gonna tell you something, and picture this. Just picture your internal organs. God forbid if you had to have surgery, and all of that fat. Is holding you back the doctor has to cut through all of that fat just to get to your organs so if you had cancer or something uh, where obesity increases your chances of cancer but if let's just say you had to had surgery the doctor got to cut through all of that to get and it's about time it's it's timing it's all about timing. so that the doctor has to cut through all of that fat to get to your internal organs which basically decreases your time in healing so it doesn't serve you to to to, to be overweight it just doesn't it just it, to me it doesn't make any sense. I'm I'm just I'm just saying it. It don't make any sense. Where's my glasses? I'm gonna read your comments, but you heard what I said. I said what I said, um, and I'm saying it on and science don't lie. I'm saying it on a science. I'm not talking about my emotions and my aesthetics and oh it's cute. It's not about me be, it being cute. I could care less to be honest with you. But as a person who has been in the fitness industry and who has seen dead bodies and watched dead body cadavers open up, it's not cute when they cut you open and you got a lot of fat tissues, a lot of adipose tissues and the organs don't even we got to cut through all they got to cut through all of that fat just to get to your colon. It's not it's not cute. It's not cute. It's not cute. So lose it. Lose it. I know New Year's resolution is coming up. I, shoo, I know New Year's resolution is coming up. And somebody, not somebody, most of you in here are going to say, mm-hmm, this be the year. Girl, you know we're going to do this together. I know. I know. Girl, we're going to lose that weight. 
We're going to lose that weight. We're going to get to the gym. We're going to join the gym. We're going to go to Planet Fitness. Girls, only $25, you know. We can do it. 25 Well, I don't know how much is Planet Fitness, but I know it's cheap. It's cheaper than Equinox and Reebok and a New York, whatever, New York Sports Club. So Planet Fitness is global. You're going to do it. $25, whatever, the, whatever your package you're going to pick. And um, make sure you use it. Make sure you use it, even if you have to go by yourself. Even you have to go by yourself because you start off and then you start dropping like flies. You make excuses. Well, I don't really have time today or I, I got to work late today. Um, the excuses is tired. It's like tired because if you look at your health and I, I and this, it's, it's unfortunate. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm really going to dedicate this live to the man that passed away. Um, he, he, uh, ooh, he died yesterday. The one I was telling you about in the beginning. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. That, that, that doesn't have to be your story. You know what I mean? You have the power. And you're not a victim. We have to stop, even with racism, we have to stop playing out the victim card that we are so powerless that we are just at the beck and call. We just, oh, my God, I'm so powerful. I can't do anything about this. I, 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 can't, I can't do anything. That is, is, is so irritating to play the victim. That you're a victim because you're black. You're a victim because you're a woman. You're a victim. Nobody forced you to eat that donut. Nobody forced you to eat that pizza. You're a victim, but you don't have a problem going to the store and eating food. Oh, well, you know, the police are killing. Yeah, the police are killing. They got knee on neck, but you're killing yourself. So you, you, you're doing obesity is a socially acceptable pandemic. It's a disease. It's been around for a long time. And basically, when we watch people um, who are not healthy eat unhealthy food, we're watching them. Every, every bite they take in that, every bite they take, they're dying. You're actually sitting there. And Thanksgiving is going to be that way. I don't even like to call it Thanksgiving. I'm so sorry to the, my indigenous people. The indigenous holiday, whatever that holiday is, I don't even want to say it. But a lot of you guys are going to sit around macaroni and cheese, carp, ham, you know, pork chops, uh, rice and beans. You're going to sit down. Ain't no vegetables. Ain't no, and if it's vegetables, it's cooked to, to God knows when. It's, it doesn't have any life force. The, the vegetables are so cooked that it doesn't have any enzymes or anything. So you're going to eat a lot of dead food, dead energy, dead flesh. Um, you're going to take a, take a plate home. You're going to take a Tupperware home. You're going to eat two or three plates. You're going to move from the table. Oh, my stomach. Oh, I'm so full. Let me get that apple pie. You full, but you're gonna scarf down that apple pie. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna scarf it down. It's, it, ugh, you don't even know. And you, okay, let me take another. Let me take two plates to go. Yeah, I'm gonna take two plates to go. <laughs> it's a ritual. It's a pagan holiday, and it gives you carte blanche in gluttony. That's what it is. It's a holiday. It's a gluttony. It's gluttony fest, where you just eating like, eating like pigs in a trough everybody's supporting each other it's like having a bullet putting a bullet to your head every bite you eat of that processed fake food you're killing yourself and you're doing it to the kids the kids are going to join you because they're going to sit at the little table because you know um if, if you're black you know how we, we have the kids sit at the little table because you know we don't want them in grown folks business you know how we like to talk our stuff like the kids don't know what we're talking about and then you're going to have that creepy uncle who's a pe pedoph pedophilia who likes feeling up on the kids, but we don't want to say anything because we don't want to hurt his feelings, so we're going to sacrifice the kids. You know how we do it. Yeah, we do it. That's dysfunction. But we, we, we don't, we don't want to talk about the dysfunction that's in our family. So now we're going to have dysfunction food. So it's a theme of dysfunction that has become the new normal, and everybody's praising the Lord. Praise Ashanta Mashenta. Hey, Lord, have mercy. God is good all the time. We're going to get a sprinkle of that. On, on to bless the, to bless the food as we eaten the last supper and and for some of that some people in there that could be their last supper <laughs> you know how we do we eat till we can't eat no more honey eyes bulging out <sighs> I gotta tell you guys this is very exhausting for me because I can't tell you how many times I have had this discussion with people and and some people get it. There are people who are going to get offended by it. And there are people who are just going to just don't give a fuck. Don't care. I'm going to die of something anyway. So what the hell? You know, so I'm just saying if that is the case, don't cry like you're a victim. Eat and be merry. 
but when when death come and knocking at your door and you and you and you take that last breath please don't do this don't 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 do it to your family don't do it to your family don't don't do it to your children don't don't do it for them if you can't do it for you do it for them do it for them you brought them here you said you was going to take care of them roof overhead that's your responsibility it's not for you to drop dead or to or, or to give them more burden to bear it is your cross to bear you made a deal with god that you were going to take care of these children that you brought in the world that has your dna this is your seed you got to reap what you sow baby but don't cry the victim card please don't do that i i, I find it I find it distasteful. And what, what now, at, at 55, I used to feel in my heart, but I don't, I don't, when people are crying, cracking out tears, I kind of just stare like, really? <laughs> you know, this is what we're doing now. We're, we're, we're being de deceitful. And then we're crying that we're victims after we, we played the role and we, pl we knew the hand that we were playing, but, but you're going to cry that you're a victim. And now you want the government to pick up the tab because you're you're you have complications complications with your health due to the choices that you made in your past and the food that you ate. But you 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 are a victim. Hmm. How's that working for you? It's not. It's not working for you. And I'm and I tell you that mentality breeds in every aspect of your life why you're living the life that you're living and why you can't get out of the trap because you just keep lying to yourself so don't do that with me if you're going to do that with yourself that's fine but don't drag me in on it because i'm not going to let you and yeah i'm not going to let somebody take my energy without reciprocating so it's i'm not going to answer certain questions i'm going to tell you straight up, i'm not going to answer it if you're asking me about your diabetes uh, whatever illnesses you have, how do you start this? Set up a consultation because that's respectful for my time and it's respectful for you because you deserve my undivided attention, not randomness. And if you can't see the value in you, I can see the value in me and I just got to get away from you because we're not a match. That's for you to deal with. But I'm not going to allow somebody to pull me in on their poverty consciousness. It's poverty consciousness when you do that. Not abundant. Because what you're telling the universe is that you don't have it. But you do have it. Because you have it for anything else. When you want your extensions. When you want to go to the movies. When you want to go and, you know, whatever, whatever. Buy those new shoes. Get those new Jordans. Get them, get, you know, whatever. But you don't got it. Mm -mm, we're not doing that. So, back to stress. I don't deal with stress because I call a spade a spade. And I, and I, and I look the devil in his mouth in his face and I'm just not you know if you live long enough I'm 55 and you've been on this planet where you've been doing that dance for a long time you you know what's going on and you and you, you, you basically you play the cards out you know nobody nobody is a victim everybody's playing out and creating their own reality so nobody is a victim everybody's is doing this and cre and making their making this happen I'm making my life happen in fact I left Brooklyn and I created my reality in a different lo location. I left because I got rid of the nonsense and, and drama, drama kings and drama queens and, and all of the, all of the crack it out tears, fake stories and all of the energy vampires. So I'm done with it. And I'm not going to accept that from TikTok and I'm not going to do that. I'm just not. That's it. So for those of you going to be mad at me, you're going to defriend, whatever, unfriend me, do what you got. I got 35,000 people. Uh, for a particular reason. Obviously, they see value in this situation. Um, and if you don't, find somebody. There's tons of tons of content creators that will entertain um, the drama. It's just not going to fly here. You know what I'm saying? That goes for men and women, black and white. I don't care who you are. If you're a human being, I'm talking to you. All right, let's read some of the, some of the comments. And please do not, under any circumstances, disrespect with the comments because some of you get a little bit all right so i'm scrolling oh here it is so a lot of you guys i forgot to answer that always ask me what is it that i eat 
Now, with due respect to what I eat, I have a video on my page that you could download, purchase and download. I have a video of a full day of what it is that I eat that you could purchase, download it, and it's yours. You could actually, it has the groceries of, you know, your groceries list. It has you side by side working with me to make the food, chopping up the food, um, the, the uh, blender, if you're going to need utilities, whatever it is. But it, it's, it's pretty much, it's on, it's, it's on my website. It's the, and the, uh, the video is called what this raw vegan eats in a day. So I, so for those of you who ask me, somebody asked me, what do I eat in a day? You can go to my website, purchase and download the video and knock yourself out. And there's your answer. You see, I put systems into place. So I just go download it, download it. That was for you on, um, what? One 1951, uh, Simon, Simon, well, yeah, so I just answered everybody's questions. So we we pretty serious. We pretty serious. Again, a lot of things that I eat is raw. I don't eat potatoes. So a lot of you guys are going to ask me, I don't eat cooked food. So if you're asking me about mashed potatoes, I personally don't eat mashed potatoes. Now, here's the, here's the, here's the, kick, here's the kick here. Me and you are different. I'm not judging what you eat. You have to live with yourself. So I'm not telling you what to eat. Somebody just asked me about mashed potatoes. I don't eat mashed potatoes. I don't eat anything cooked. Mashed potatoes is cooked. Um, I don't eat that. So um, I, I don't, I don't want to tell you guys something that I'm not doing. But if you want to eat mashed potatoes, you eat your mashed potatoes. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm just not, I don't eat mashed potatoes. So you, you guys would be asking me things that I don't eat. I don't eat, let me say this. I don't eat anything that's cooked. No heat applied to it. So mashed potatoes is cooked. I don't eat rice. Anything cooked, cooked, cooked. I don't eat it. So nothing cooked, nothing cooked. <laughs> Somebody said all of a sudden my holiday. Jim and I said all of a sudden. Jim and I lady said all of a sudden my holiday, holiday meal don't sound so good. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not saying this to shame you. I'm not saying this to shame you. It's just that a lot of you guys be talking big talk and you say you want to come this route. But then at the end of the day, you, you play it like deer's a, deer, a deer in a head like, like you don't know. You, you, you play like you got, you got selective amnesia. Um, my regimen of consumption is extremely disciplined due to the lifestyle that I live. I want to live to be... I want to live to be healthy. I don't want to take pills. I don't want to, to, to have to get surgery. I do this because the food has the medicine in it, raw, uncooked. So all my food, because it has the minerals from the earth, I consume from the earth. I don't eat anything that comes in a package, a box, a glass, a can. I, I don't eat it. I don't eat cheese. I don't eat, I don't eat honey. Honey comes from bees. I don't eat cheese because it has all of that casing, even vegan cheese. I don't even eat vegan processed food. I don't eat the fake burgers. Um, but what I do eat is fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, and herbs, uncooked, unheated, unprocessed. That's it. So it's like a lot of times you guys are asking me, well, prime example, you eat potatoes, mashed potatoes? I just told you guys that, um, I just told you guys that I don't eat cooked food. So mashed potatoes is cooked so why would i be eating mashed potatoes if i told you i don't eat cooked food i don't eat cooked food no quinoa no cooked anything with fire no cook no cook no cook no cook no milk no cheese no honey no ice cream no bread no pasta no spaghetti no pasta none of that none of that none of that i don't eat that i i do eat fruits vegetables seeds nuts and herbs i eat that all right, let's see if you guys get it now. Cause I let's see if somebody got. Do you, do you guys get what I'm saying now? What I eat? <laughs> Cause you guys, that's vegan. I'm raw. I'm raw vegan. I don't eat eggs. I don't eat meat. That's raw vegan. Fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, and herbs. And I'm and I'm repeating myself because it's not. I don't think in your brain that it, you're you're grasping what I'm saying because it's it's kind of like a glitch in the system. You guys are not used to seeing people like me eat raw food, fruits and vegetables. So you have you having an issue um, with your with your computer and with your processing what I'm saying. So that's why I'm saying it several times because you guys keep asking me the same question. Yes, raw. Okay. See now you understand what I'm saying. Okay, good. 
Yeah, so you guys understand. What's well, not clicking, Stephen? It's true. People say they want to transition to raw. If you want to transition to raw, I do do web, web uh, I do workshops. Just go to my Delilah Fitness. Put your email on Delilah Fitness, and um, and I'll send you a monthly uh news publication, a email newsletter of any of the classes that I have coming up. <sighs> Whew, I'm exhausted. When I talk to you guys, it's it's like I love it. Don't get me wrong, but it's it's energy because I got to keep ex- explaining my my life. Uh, lifestyle uh, not a diet it's a lifestyle to explain it and and I and, and and it's funny because you know what it's like it's like talking it's like talking to somebody who eats meat and a veg a vegan is trying to explain to the meat eater um, what they eat because the, the meat eater doesn't understand how you could not eat meat and be full you know what I'm saying? You have you you get meat eaters that say I don't understand how you live like that on fruits and vegetables, bird food, bird food. But how do you how do you get and where do you get your protein? Like that's what it's like sometimes. So and I and I get that because you guys are not used to my lifestyle um, because you have never. I don't know if you ever met anybody 100 percent raw. Um, you, you but you know you know what I'm saying. It's just it's just um, it's challenging because you, as a person. I have to get into your head. And before you could even understand the words that come out of my mouth, you have to be able to grasp the concept. And a lot of times, especially as one gets older, they get set. It's like cement. They get set in their ways. It's harder because the brain and, you know, some people's brain is so full that it's hard to receive new information. People can't process it. And when people try to process it, they try to compare it to what they have in their brain. But you have to empty out your brain to to get new information and this was this is what happens to older people when you get set in your ways like cement um it's hard it's harder to teach older people how to eat like this as opposed to me teaching somebody in high school like a younger person their brain have doesn't have a lot of stuff in it where they have to delete it's like a computer when your your computer is 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 full so you can't put any more information on a computer so you have to delete what you got before the computer crash that's how it is dealing with older people because a lot of us are set in our ways and we are it is hard for somebody older to change do you see what i'm saying it's just a fact as opposed to if i was talking to somebody in their 20s they would have gotten this already because their brain is not full with 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 miscellaneous stuff also our brain as older people have stuff from from 1970 1980 and that stuff is not working anymore and a lot of us as we get older we hold on to old concepts that no longer serve us so when i'm talking to you (laughs) you keep trying to compare your life and what you know but you don't know i'm that's why i'm telling you but you some of you guys it's hard to it's like a walnut like a coconut it's hard to get in there because you're so busy fighting the information you don't want to receive it because it you have that's your identity and a lot of people are scared because they have all their life they've been living like this and eating like this it it, it makes them scared of change some people are are, are definitely scared to let go of, of 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 their identity so that's what i'm dealing with i'm dealing with with people especially people my age 40 and up that want it curious about it but don't know how to proceed to receive it you know what i'm saying so it's just tough it's tough you know i got here's let me tell you something baby who said that who said that um vegan says it's lonely being vegan all right let me read some of this so i know how to answer Okay, user 501 says stop eating red meat. The pi- de- Yeah, decalcified the pineal gland. And that's exactly when you eat processed food. And, and I'm not even going to get into the pineal gland. Thanks, for um, um, Terrence, for saying that. But a lot of you guys can't even conceive the pineal gland because you're not there. You're not there. You, if I say that, it's like, it's like speaking, speaking another language. A lot of people you guys cannot receive because it's inf- information overload. So what I'm trying to do is to spoon feed you where you don't shut down. And, and, and fall asleep and say, oh, that's, um, that's boring. So what I'm trying to do is I'm not even going to get to the pineal gland. We're not, we're not, we, we haven't even gotten through the door. But thanks, Terrence, for you. Are, and, and, and there are people who are on different frequencies that get the pineal gland. A lot of you guys don't get it. Cause you, and, and you can't get it. 
and it's no disrespect to you, but you're, it's calcified. You can't understand if I was to talk about the pineal gland because you're, yours is clouded. You can't receive the information. So we have to decalcify your pineal gland so you can receive information. That's it. That's it. So basically, it's a, it's a hell of a job. You know, a lot of you guys don't see the work that I do. It's energy work. It's like shadow work. It's like it's an energy work. And basically, when you're dealing with the physical, doctors will cut you up and butcher you and sew you up and, and, and whatever. Is that my sister? No. But when you're dealing with people's energy and you're dealing with dysfunction and trauma, that's a lot of work, baby. Because you got to get in them. You got to get in and you have to get them to trust you with information and, and also for them to feel comfortable sharing information with you. It's a, it's a lot of work because then you have to help them, guide them out of that, out of trauma and where they can come to a place where they are, they are at peace with themselves and they let that, you know, but it, it's work, baby. It's work. A lot of you guys see one dimensional, but it's multidimensional. It's a lot of work. A lot of work, a lot of work. So I don't have, and that's why I don't pick a lot of clients. I'm, I'm very selective with the people that I do pick when it comes to energy work because it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot for me. And I'm 55 and I need to, re, I need to hold on some energy for me. So I pick limited people and, and people who are serious. I, I'm not, I don't pick pranks as people who just want to play games and they want to, you know, they in, out, in, out. It's like, if you're ready for transition, I'm, I'm dealing with people who are seriously ready to take to, to take that plunge. But many are called, but the chosen a few, and a lot of people just are not there yet. And that's understandable, because I wasn't at one point. But um, as far as dying for over, I, I get this too, well, you're going to die of something. I got to sit on that for a while, because that that is a defeatist conversation. When someone says, I'm, you're going to, what's the purpose of prolonging your life because eventually you're gonna die. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. I'll be sixty in five years, right? I'm fifty five now. I don't plan on transitioning out of this body just yet because I still have more work to do. I, I'm not finished with the job that I need to do in this body. But what I'm learning and this is gonna come is to stay away from from from, from questions like that. Because what happens with people like this, they're trying to suck you in as a, they, they had, like, you're going to die of something, like pity, like pity me. I'm, we, you know, if you're going to die of something anyway, then finish eating your burgers and fries and your bacon and cheese and everything, because um, you, you're already dead. We have people who, who are like zombies here. They, they, they not, they're not happy with their life, so they, they want to, you know, they want to they wanna be like a, like a sour apple, you know. And I'm not going to let that person... I don't even answer questions like that because it's so, it's so behind me. <coughs> the pollen. So I, certain things at this stage of my evolution and my spiritual evolution is not worth me answering. That's for somebody who's just coming into the, to, to a situation, but I'm not the one to answer it because it's, it's draining. And it's a pity party. Oh, well, we're going to die in seven anyway. Okay. You stay over there. And, and and die. But don't come over here with that. <laughs> I only want to deal with the living. The people who want to live. The people who who have a, a, a sense of purpose in life. That's a defeatist mentality. And with people like that, when they have a defeatist mentality, it's not worth entertaining that. Because they will drag you in on their drama. And drama is real. Energy is real. Some people are just miserable, and misery loves company. So, baby, if it... And, and, and here's another... I'm going to answer right now. I get a lot of people saying... I get a lot of people saying to me, well, you know, um, Delilah. It's lonely. Oh, it's it's so lonely. Oh, it's lonely. I don't think I can take... It's lonely being vegan or it's lonely making transitions. Okay. You're right, it is lonely. And 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 my heart goes out for you. You're you're but let me tell you something. You're not the only one that's dealing with 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 this. And and for me, I've made a conscious choice to to travel this path and yes it it is lonely. 
but it's the benefits outweighs the loneliness because if I look back in hindsight to what I was doing and who I was hanging out with, smoking weed, drinking alcohol, carrying on with a bunch of people right now that have cancer, who has a philosophy bag. I used to hang out with friends drinking alcohol, smoking weed. Losers, losers. I'm 55. And, and if I compare my life to right now and you say, oh, well, it's lonely. But you know what? I'd rather be here than where I was before because I was dying before. And those people were not my friends. They were using me. We were using each other for sex, drugs, and alcohol. So I don't, I don't mind being lonely because I'm not lonely. It's just that that crowd back then was a waste of time that drinking drugging sexing it up all of those clubs i spent all my money good money wasted money on on foolishness the clothes the latest fashions the this the that and and i have nothing to show for that now all of that stuff that i spent money on and all of those people that so-called said oh you know i love you no people are a lot of times people don't even know what love is they out for what they can get so for me, I'd rather be by myself because at least I know what I'm dealing with. But all of that stuff, because I'm telling you, a lot of people are so traumatized, they don't even know what love is. People know how to have sex, but they don't know nothing about no love. Love and sex is two different things. And the average person that you see walking through the street are so traumatized from childhood, they don't know nothing about no love. That's why divorce is so high. That goes for black and white people, Chinese people, so we don't even have to play the race card. People have trauma and dysfunction. And they need to fix that before they even get into a relationship because they're not ready. People are not ready. But you know what? Trauma, trauma bonding is real. And we live in a world where people bond off of trauma. That's love. Dysfunction is the new love. So I'm not really, I'm not lonely. If anything, I'm loved because I'm making a choice of putting, taking myself out of harm's way. And if taking myself out of harm's way is lonely, then I'll, so be it. So be it. I'd rather be... Let me tell you something. I'd rather be doing what I'm doing than out there jiving and being in a, in a, in a, in a, with, with, some, with some fake friends and some fake relationship and then find myself in the end all used up, dried up like a prune, like a raisin and, and, and confused in an apartment in, in Brooklyn, you know, sitting by myself about to overdose or just, you know, commit suicide. Because it's, it's not... Because people are living a false sense of reality. People are miserable. Miserable. And misery loves company. So, baby, I'm happy because I may be by myself, but you know what? I don't have to answer to nobody but God. I, go, I went jogging today. I had a wonderful time. I got a roof over my head. And this is, if you say that this is lonely, this is what lonely looks like to me. I'm going to tell you. I got a roof over my head. I'm in Central America in the sun getting my vitamin D. I got food on my plate. I got a plate to get food on my plate. I have everything that I need. So if being lonely is living the life of this, let me be lonely, baby. Let me be lonely. Instead of carrying dead weight with me, staying in Brooklyn in a relationship that's not working, staying because I'm trying to fix it. I'm, I'm trying to fix a relationship, so I'm going to stay in Brooklyn. Instead of getting my ticket to go to Central America, I'm going to stay and make this. I'm going to stay and make this work. I'm going to stay and make this work. I'm going to fix it by myself. And it's two people in a relationship, but I'm going to fix a broken relationship. Two people in, but I'm going to fix it. <laughs> Are you crazy? You can't fix something between two people. You can fix yourself, but you can't fix the other person. And a lot of women and men too waste time being in a dead relationship. I'm in Central America, boo. And I'm, I, I may be... I may, if you calling this lonely and I just went jogging and I'm loving my life, call it what you like, boo. But I'd rather this than, than the alternative. And at 55, I don't have time to, to, to fix somebody. This is not that time anymore because I don't have that much time left. Uh, the little bit of time that I got in this body, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride this bitch to the wheel fall off. And I'm going to ride it for me. This time part of my life, I'm creating the rules. I'm riding this body and I'm, I'm creating my own rules. I'm not going by nobody's rules anymore. I did that. It didn't work for me. 
wasted time. But a lesson learned. Because by the mere fact that I followed the rules, went, got my college degree, got the CEO job, got a job, did everything, top this, got the, got the benefits of the job, moved on. It didn't work. Being in the perfect relationship, you know, having that, that, that fake, you know, I'm, I'm college degree, that person's college degree, we, ha- we have this beautiful co-op, but we couldn't stand each other. After the honeymoon stage was over, it was over. But we stayed, but we were miserable together. So, no, I'm good. I'm good. Don't need it. What? What? I'm, okay, hold up. So a lot of you guys have to reevaluate what is happiness because I'm, what I'm getting from a lot of you guys is that you stuck. You stuck. These ants are out of control. You're stuck and you're too scared to make a move and you're miserable and, and misery love company. And so you stuck. You want other people to be stuck because you don't if they move on, that's going to cause you to question your life. And money is not everything. You could you could have I know people who have a, a clients have a lot of money and they're miserable. So don't use money as an excuse that why you money come and go, baby. It's paper. But you only have one life. And what you do with it between birth and death is up to you. And I'm taking a chance and I'm betting on me. So I don't want to hear the crying of the drama. I don't want to hear it. And I don't even want you to even text me if it's about the drama. Only deal with me if you're about the realness and you really want to do something about your life. If not, you could be a, a, what, what, you get, you guys are like voyeurs. You kind of just like, you know, you're watching me and you're you're kind of for a second, you live vicariously through me. It's like a feel good drug. You're getting like a release and like, yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. But you're not doing nothing. You're not doing nothing. It's like going to church and praising the Lord. Oh, that sermon was for me. But then when you get out, you pick up on your regular, uh, you know, program. You you haven't really changed. You just you did that. You did the mouth. You know, you you talk the good game. But at the end of the day, you did nothing. So you got nothing. And you stuck because of you sitting around not doing nothing. And then you you playing the victim role like the world the world is oh woe is me the world is so hard to me oh I I can't get out you know you you can't get out because you don't want to get out you there because you want to be there so don't don't you do yourself a disservice and I'm telling you this for a reason I know it's tough love but when you when you when you don't be honest with yourself and you lie to yourself and you lie and you have friends that lie to you um. You just stay stuck. You just stay stuck. You, you never really move from that place. You think you did in your mind, but your body is still in that same. You never took one step. That's why, that's why virtual reality works for a lot of people. You know, virtual reality works because you guys don't have to do the work. You can live vicariously through me. You could watch this live, right? Because this, this happens a lot. Because I used to do it. You're going to watch this live. And you're going to feel fired up. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know how it is. You're going to feel fired up. Like, yeah, when I get off, I'm going to do this, this, that, and the other. And then when you get off, you look around. You don't do nothing. You do more talking. And then you wait for me to come back on. Or you wait for somebody else like me. Or you get some inspirational quotes from, from, um, from what? Eckhart Tolle. And you know you, but you 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 don't do nothing. You just feed off like feed off the energy of other people, and that becomes your your life. You sit and you just live vicariously through other people, but you have not taken one step towards changing your life. And th- for those of you who do that, please stop crying the victim card because when you don't do nothing, you don't get nothing. And that's the truth. So we don't have to. We don't have to do this because it. It just. I'm. I'm tired of it. I'm gonna be honest with you. I get so tired of watching TikTok and watch you guys complain about your life, and complain about this and complain about this person. It's. It's like. It's like. It's like. It's. It's. A, it's a Debbie Downer, and those are the people that I don't want to be around. That's why I don't have friends like that, and I'd rather have no friends. Then have friends that are that are like like leeches, 
You know? <laughs> so, and a lot of you guys are, are you're, the, a lot of you guys, and no disrespect, are so caught up in living through fake reality that you don't even, a lot of you guys forgot what it is. And I guess the pandemic contributes to that because, you know, we, we couldn't contact each other and touch each other. Now we're living in a virtual reality. Um, it has it has come to a point at the at the crossroads where a lot of us are living in a virtual world where it's it's not really happening in real time, but in your mind it's happening, and you kind of just your body just becomes decomposed because you're like sitting in a chair, and now everything is in here, everything is in here, so you don't really move, you just sit in that one spot. And, and you get fed information, but you, you don't, you don't input any information. You don't, you don't, you don't have anything to contribute because you haven't, you haven't used your brain because everything is sourced in. So they program you and they give you what reality is and you accept it and you just kind of, you die, but you have accepted somebody else's reality by imploding on, on programs. So a lot of you guys are just kind of, um, kind of like sitting ducks where you you kind of just like 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 a like 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 a deer in headlights if something a car was to come at you and hit you you just you haven't used your body or your organs or you haven't used your legs you kind of just sit there in virtual reality like like on tiktok or you just sit and you just absorb all of that and you do nothing you do nothing you do nothing and then you wonder why your life is like this you didn't do anything. Oh, let me read your comments. Okay, what? Okay. Somebody, Miss said, Miss Monica said, that's me. Need your tough love today. Thank you. You're welcome. And it's not me being facetious or mean. It's just that I, I get so, I grow so weary of the racism when people cry the card and they cry about the government and they cry, but you surrender when you do that you surrender your power to that you become powerless like it wasn't my fault the government did it to me you are the government you're doing it to yourself because you're surrendering your power it's a trade-off when you surrender your power to the government the government is going to treat you accordingly because you surrendered even with the doctors oh well um i have to take these beta blockers Oh, I have to take these drugs because the doctor said so. Because my health is just so questionable. I don't know how it got like that. Why, God? Why me? And it's like, really? You're going to say that? After years of eating processed food and after years of drinking alcohol and after years of being a, around toxic people, you're going to say to yourself, you don't know why that this is happening to you? you got to pay the piper. Nothing is free. All of that stuff that you were doing in the past is going to come back and bite you in the ass. <laughs> nobody, nobody gets out of here alive. Really? But you definitely, when you're playing with the mob, you, you have to pay the piper. You, 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 you ate like that for a long time. And now your body is responding to it because it can no longer hold it. You, it's full with inflammation. So you got to... Let's just... Let's just stop it. Let's fucking, I mean, I'm sorry. Let's just stop it. Let's stop, stop being a victim. Stop crying wolf. Stop crying the race card. Stop being Karen. Stop being Ken. Stop having the government control you. Stop being in, in, in a state of, of fuck, like a coma, like you're in a coma and you, and you, and you can't move. You just, you know, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And, and, and I, and I personally, um, I'm personally sick and tired of black people, white people, Asian people. I'm so sick of all of everybody just complaining and not coming up with a solution or being the solution. You know, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I'm taking my power back. Oh, you know, come on, guys. Really, we could do we could do better. We could do. We, I believe in you, us as a human species, the human race. We could do better, babes. Do better. Chef's kiss. Mwah. Do better. All day. Yeah, Miss Monica says, she says, I hear patients complaining about that stuff all day. Aging is, in yeah, is inevitable. 
but suffering is an option i totally believe see that's what i'm saying aging is inevitable there's nothing i can do about aging but i'm not going to suffer i'm not going to suffer i'm not suffering aging is a blessing i'm blessed i'm at a state of my in my life where i'm calling the shots right now i'm living it like frank sinatra said the rules don't apply to me anymore i'm going through menopause so i'm not having children i'm not you know i'm 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 not going to get pregnant um I'm, I'm at a place in space where i got my degrees i did everything everybody supposed to, told me to do and now it's my turn to 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 do with me do me to do me so listen get a backbone <laughs> get a backbone guys get a backbone get, get some kahunas get some kahunas um and and really stop crying just if you're gonna do something if you're gonna eat that meat eat that meat if you're gonna if you if something is happening just say i wanted it i did it i did it nobody did this to me if you get diabetes or if you're overweight i did this to me i i ate so much that i i just kept eating 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 that's why i'm i'm over, overweight because it was because of me my daughter's overweight. Just say you, you, your daughter, you got a kid that's obese. I did it because I went grocery shopping. I shopped. And now, now, love, listen, when I say kids, we got children five years old that's obese. Five, five years old. This is going to be the first time in history that a lot of parents are going to be burying their children of type 2 diabetes, hypertension. So it's, it's, it's not other people. It's not a black, white issue is not racism it's choices we're making choices that is not beneficial to us at all it's our choice it's us that's making us sick it's nobody else that's doing it but us each individual human being is making themselves sick and i'm gonna say mental men, mental is real i have dealt with people who were sexually molested sexually mishandled with clients and and i know i'm fitness but a lot of time dealing with clients you have to get in their head so when i'm dealing with the clients i have to vet if i want to work with them if they're if they're workable you know you don't just get off the street and not and i'm, I'm working with you that it doesn't work like that you have to vet people and a lot of times with people um i found um they needed therapy first before they could even work with a trainer because a lot of them have so much pent up trauma um, that it it, it 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 benefits them to 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 heal from the deep rooted subconscious trauma that they've been they've been they've been harboring for years from their childhood that's dictating and making decisions for them in their in their present moment and a lot of times and that's why I don't do relationships because it's not me when i go on it i used to date um i used to hear people talk about well you know my ex-wife is and first of all <laughs> anyway my ex-wife she's this and she's that and she's you know she did this to me now i'm on a date with them and they're talking about their ex and how horrible their ex is but they wasn't like that all the time so when i see somebody that makes me look at you sideways because you're talking about her she can't defend herself it's three sides to every story but you're going to try to manipulate me by telling me your version of the story i need to hear hers too before i make an assessment and obviously she wasn't that bad because your ass married her so don't do it so it's just and when you deal with that you also know that, that he has mother issues he has mother issues and and the bottom line is that women we we got some people human beings we need before we could even do any more procreation of bringing other children in the world we got enough children that we could take care of. We don't need to bring any more children in the world. We need to deal with the ones we have. And we need to just really deal with our trauma. Because when you have a baby and you have trauma and trauma come together, you build more trauma. Now we got the child who's on steroids. His trauma is stronger because he's younger. And he 10 times as potent as your trauma. Because he's carrying, he's carrying your trauma and now he's creating his own trauma based on the trauma that you've given him. Now, he has to heal twice as hard, or she. And it's not worth wreaking that havoc on, on the planet anymore. We got enough people who are damaged, and that's the truth. That's why a lot of people can't get married. They can't hold relationships. They can't, you know, it starts out really nice, and then you start to see the real person. You know, so let's, let's 
let's put the brakes on 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 a lot of this stuff and let's just deal with each individual healing just put the brakes on put, put it on put it on yeah so you know that's all i wanted to say so it's not that i'm a cold and malice person um i've seen so much and and based on living in this body and seeing life and living life in many different ways i you know came from the bronx to brooklyn to now i'm in belize and and and, and moving myself and making myself much more malleable and open to change and not being so like concrete stuck and not wanting to change if i would not have changed i would have still been in brooklyn but i would have still been eating meat you know um and basically i'm and i'm gonna be honest with you how i changed was because my body was shutting down i couldn't it, it had um tumors and i used food to heal the tumors so you know and i have a video on my website because i know somebody's gonna ask me that's why i said it like that you saw my face when i was like mm, i have a video um, a food that fight cancer now with this video food that fight cancer it also fights diseases so whether you have diabetes hypertension whatever you got cholesterol issues go to my website and and it's, it's foods that fight cancer it's a workshop it's on my website you could purchase it and download it and it's yours and it has recipes it has the foods that heal and I take it the food that heal that that you know the food that I show you that heals um, diseases and you make a meal out of it so you make two meals you got two meals that you get with that video and it's not it's not like a recipe book but it's a you go to the grocery store I let you know it's a list of what you need to get and we make the food side by side and I'll show it to you side by side so it's foods that fight cancer but it's not just for cancer it's disease all right because I, I just I, I just had to say that because I get that a lot because somebody's gonna say yeah it's a lot it's a lot but I'm, I'm i'm grateful that you know by the grace of god goes i that i have been chosen um to walk this walk and to to live this life and to be an example of what 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 healing being a catalyst and 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 not to be worshiped because i'm not a guru but i have the information because i've been on this on this on this journey that i could help other people with what i know without drugs you know what i mean um so and and not to take away from doctors because if you are taking i i work with doctors so i work with doctors so i'm not gonna say get off the gut no i'm not doing that um but i could add sup I could add, as, actually with the food i could actually supplement and help you get off the medication and with and also working with your doctor so i'm not going to do that whole craziness where uh, you know you just getting off the medication like that we have to i have to talk to your doctor and i'm and we will work together you know what i mean Whew. All right. I think I've, I've covered every gamut of this of this dialogue. Um, let me see. Hey, Queen. Queen said, what's up, sis? I'm diabetic, but don't take medication. So that's a da. She must, um, I'm a leukemia. So, so natural bliss is a leukemia survivor. So we got some heavy hitters in here. Thanks for the rose, Yolanda. I appreciate it. Ah, so we got some heavy hitters in there. Need to need to use your food as medicine. You know what the hippo, the oath is: let food be thy medicine, and medicine thy food. And and make sure that you are getting your exercise in, because a lot of you guys, <laughs> you don't want to do the exercise. Yoga. Take some yoga classes. Walk around the block. Go up and down the stairs. If you have a house, go up and you could work out in your house. You don't even need a treadmill. Go up and down those stairs ten times a day. 10 times a day, up and down the stairs. If you don't have a stairs, go in your hallway. If you live in the projects, if you live in the PJs, go in the hallway in the PJs and go up and down those darn stairs. Go up and down the stairs. We got something for you even in the PJs. You don't need to join no gym. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you missed it, boo, because I'm about to be out. We had a heavy, heavy conversation. I had to really do like roto ruta i had to go in i had to fix some pipes up in in this room and it, and, and it was a lot of blockage if you know what i mean and a lot of fecal matter on top of the colon i had to go in and and and, and clean out some of these pipes with some of these people you know and i gotta say to my older people don't be afraid of change i'm gonna say that again are you ready you ready you ready 
don't be afraid of change. Don't be so set in your ways that you so stuck on something that worked 20 years ago that ain't working for you right now. Don't get stuck because that, that's stagnation. It's like when, in the, in the, in the, in the, and I think of everything as far as the body. It's like the, if, if we, in our, in our circulation system with the heart and our veins and our capillaries, if the blood was to get stuck, and and basically um and it would get it would be it would become stagnant and that's energy energy i'm the circulation system so if you're stuck you you stop you stop new energy from coming in and you stop the body from evolving so for me um i let go of meat that was big but i also letting go of cooked food was huge for me but I'm, I'm always open to learning something, even from anybody. I can learn from you. you. I can learn from somebody five years old. And, you know, some of my biggest teachers are children. Those are my biggest teachers. I sit down and I watch kids and I talk to them when we're planting because, I, you know, I have a garden and the kids come in here. And, you know, they get their fruits and vegetables. They grow their little, you know, bok choy and stuff. And they pick it up when it's grown and they water it and they give it love. But they're learning, teaching them how to love and to nurture that's important because back in the days when we was when we was i know when we was in high school we used to carry this egg you remember that egg that you had to carry and if it broke you know psychology class anyway instead of an egg i have them taking care of the plants they have their own little area here and it's so cute that that ador- kids are adorable because they just have such innocence and they they and they ask questions they're critical thinkers they haven't gotten stuck in a program where they're just kind of accepting what what you tell them so with them, they always ask, and, and, I'm, I'm, and their questions are more stimulating and thought-provoking than adults. They think outside of the box because they haven't gotten controlled by the system yet. They're still fresh. They're still out of the womb, you know what I mean? So they don't have the contamination that we do. See, for us, we're going to have to shake off a lot of programs from childhood and, 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 and a lot of stuff that we were taught. Um, and it's difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult to, to reprogram an old mind, especially a mind that's, that's been on this planet and that's been receiving, you know, program from, from here. So um, it's not impossible, but um, it's work. It's work. It's work it's work um and a lot of us may have to go see a therapist you know how that go because a lot of times you can't do it by yourself i know you try to be cheap and save a dollar because you don't want to spend any money because you think that if you go and watch some youtube (laughs) you you guys kill me you're gonna try to take that money with you right all right so a lot of you guys i see the therapist for years baby and the reason why is because i needed help see i wasn't too proud to beg you see what I'm saying? I wasn't, I didn't have my, my, I didn't have that, that, that when I needed help and I really made up my mind that I, I surrendered. I, hum, a humidity, a humility, humility. I humbled myself and ate gruel and ate gruel. Um, and it was tough and I'm still a work in progress, but you have to have humility. You have to have humility when you ask for help. You can't come in here with this stench of a boisy attitude and want somebody to help you. That's not going to work. I'm the type of person that I don't work with people like that because I don't have it in me to, to deal with that. I'm, I'm not going to deal with that because it's, it's, I'm working twice as hard. <laughs> and I don't deserve that. That person just needs to go, They need to go back out and, and deal with the world and, and, and get beat up a couple of more times before they get soft. But I'm 55. Um... I'm living my best life. I'm loving where I'm at in my mental state, mentally, physically, and spiritually. And if my information can help somebody else, especially my older people, um, soften up, soften up. Nobody's trying to hurt you. I know, I know. You've been through a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Your heart was broken, I know. Um, You've been through some stuff. Somebody hurt you. I know, I know, I know. Now your heart is, your heart is hard. Hard is hard. You got a black hole in your chest because somebody hurt you. You're going to make everybody else pay for it. I know. I know. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It is tough. I'm not being, I'm not being sarcastic. It's tough. It's hard once you've been hurt, not once, not twice, but several times. I mean, I, I, you know, come on. I could get a violin and play 
a music. I didn't know who my dad was. My mother had me at 14. I was a system of, I was a, you know, product of the public school system. You know, I'm, I'm black. I was black in America. Um, I'm a woman, you know, I could play the same tune, baby. And we could actually, you know, do a B flat and play that note. But it didn't serve me. That, and, I, and I'm going to tell you, my pain, when I, when I was living in my pain, it, it didn't serve me. Doors didn't open for me. Um, I, was, I was in a space and place of, of suicide tendencies. This, this hurting and not wanting people to see my vulnerability and be, be um, transparent because I kept thinking people are going to hurt me and take my kindness and they're going to use it against me. Years it took for me to trust. Even relationships I had, I blew it because I, I had trust issues and daddy issues. So you're not alone. You're not alone. We are all going through it. We're all going through it, baby. But if you keep holding on to it, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna take that to the grave. And your heart's going to be black and you're going to have so many regrets of what you could have did if you just had a second chance. And you got that chance right now. 